Hey everyone, it's Caitlin and welcome to another video. On this day, I filmed a super chill what I eat in a day video where I was just working from home. Some really easy, yummy and cozy meals. So I started out my day with some peppermint tea and then alongside that, I had my usual glass of water. I usually sip on this with a nice thick straw, which makes it easier until around noon or so, but I like to get started early in the morning, get some water right in my system before I have breakfast. So recently I've been making this thing that I like to call stupid easy oatmeal. It's so easy, it's ready in like literally five minutes or less. So all you're gonna do is take some oats, add them to a bowl. I am using rolled oats here. They're sprouted rolled oats, so they're kind of like a consistency between rolled oats and quick oats. I use around three fourths of a cup and then I add a pinch of salt. This is key for optimum oaty, nutty flavor in my opinion. Then I'm also going to add some cinnamon here, maybe a little, maybe a lot some ground flax, and then just mix everything together just to sort of distribute the flax so you don't get any weird chunks later. And then all you're going to do is add hot water to it. So I just use my electric kettle and bring water to a boil, and then I add water to it. I usually add about a cup of water from doing three fourths of a cup of oats just because I like my oats to be a little bit more on the runnier side, not super thick, but you could definitely add less if you like like really thick oats. Then you're just going to stir everything together to make sure it's all well incorporated and cover it with a plate and wait like two to three minutes because the flax and the oats are going to absorb the water. And then you have oatmeal without having to dirty a pot. You can just wash out your bowl, put it in the dishwasher once you're done, just rinse the plate off. As you can see, very easy, very simple, and you can still get like thick and creamy oats. And if it's too thick, you can add more water, yada, yada, yada but I added some frozen blueberries to mine, and then I kept it pretty simple, just added some hemp hearts today uh, for some extra plant-based protein. I actually really like the combination of the hemp hearts and the blueberries. The blueberries are naturally sweet, so don't add any sugar or anything to the oatmeal, and the hemp hearts have like a nice subtle crunch and nutty flavor. So that was it for breakfast. And then for lunch, I made myself a uh, kitchen sink salad, basically just using up some leftovers that I had in the fridge. Again, this meal came together in probably like 10 minutes. I found literally five Brussels sprouts in my fridge. I think they were left over from my meal prep or something. So I just chopped them up and then I was recipe testing some veggie beet burgers and I just decided to heat those up in the microwave. If you wanted to replicate microwave, not the microwave, the air fryer. If you wanted to replicate this recipe at home, like I was saying, you could just buy some frozen veggie burgers or add in other vegetables. I just didn't have too much in my fridge actually. So I just wanted to add those to get some beets and there are also some like beans and walnuts in them. So I just plopped everything into the air fryer and then in the meantime, made the base for my salad. So I took some baby spinach, plopped it in there. And then I also added some arugula. I love arugula, but I know it's not for everyone. So, you know, you can always just use more baby spinach. And then on top of my greens, I added some cooked beans. I made cannellini beans. Actually, I think they're navy beans um, in my Instant Pot. I just like to make a big batch of beans in my Instant Pot just with water. There's no salt or anything added to them. And then add them in lunches and dinners throughout the week. It's a really easy source of plant-based protein. And I just add salt later or like add more salt in my dressing. I guess you could add salt to them too. Whoa, nice job with the tahini there, Caitlin. I'm like freaking out. But I'm making a dressing. So I got this hummus at the store that honestly I don't really like. Um, but I needed to use it up and I've been trying to find creative ways to use it up And I think the reason I don't like it is because there's no tahini in it. So honestly, it's not even hummus. It's like chickpea dip but I'm adding some tahini to this hummus and it makes it significantly better. And I, you know, just a dollop or two, it's roasted red pepper hummus. Then I just stir that all together. And then I actually decided to add a little bit of water this time so I could thin it out and make it more of like a salad dressing. If you're looking for like an actual recipe that's similar to this, I have a hummus salad dressing recipe that's on my blog. So I'll link that below if you're interested. And then the beet burger finished uh, cooking first. So I chopped those up and just added them to the bowl. And then once the Brussels sprouts were done, I added those on top and mixed everything together just so it wasn't all in, you know, blobs on the bowl. And then I poured my hummus tahini dressing thing um, on top of the salad. And that was pretty much it. Uh, I like to have a lot of texture and like variety and in ingredients in my salad. So I did want to add a little bit of a crunch as well. So I decided to add some pickled red onions. I always like to keep a batch of these on hand because they're the perfect thing to add to salads or sandwiches or, you know, I, sometimes they're gonna mash potatoes. Okay, anyways, it's random. Put the recipes on my blog, I will link it below. And then I also added some black pepper just for a little bit of a kick and flavor variety. And that was it, again, 
very easy, very lazy, just came down from doing computer work, threw this all together, and then right back upstairs and ate it while I did more work. And then for an afternoon snack, I had some kombucha. I actually ate half of this bottle the day before, so I was just finishing it off, poured it into a glass, you know, to make me feel a little more fancy. And then I also had a sumo orange on the side. I love these, they're so good. They're really expensive, so I don't get them very often, but they're in season right now. And they're just like super easy to peel. And I think it's a cross between like a tangerine and some other type of orange. So they're sweet, but also slightly tart and really juicy and very good. So, you know, if you see them in your store, they're worth a splurge. Just get like one or two. You know, it's kind of like my version of candy, except I eat candy too, but it's a good afternoon snack. So then now moving on to dinner, I made my one pot pasta recipe. I actually recently posted this recipe in a different YouTube video, but I didn't have the same veggies I used in that recipe and uh, it's pretty customizable. So I just decided to use whatever we had in the fridge. So I had some portobello mushrooms, which I chopped up. And then I also diced about half of a yellow onion. And then Dylan and I both love olives. So we got some of these from our grocery store. It was just like a variety from the olive bar. And so I just chopped those up so they'd be in smaller pieces. And that way their juices would like add flavor to the pasta as it was cooking too. And then I wanted a little something else and we didn't have any fresh tomatoes. So I had a bag of these sun-dried tomatoes. So I just decided to use some of those and they were in strips, but I wanted them a little smaller. So I just roughly chopped them with a knife. And last but certainly not least, I also decided to chop some garlic. And fun fact, I'm showing you right here uh, to peel garlic. If you use the flat side of your knife and sort of press down on the garlic, the clove will slightly crack and it will separate that tough peel um, from the outside of the garlic. So it generally it makes it easy to peel. And it's a good way to take out your aggression too. So just slice some garlic and then I roughly chopped it. We kind of like pieces of garlic in our pasta, so I wasn't like too concerned about chopping it finely. And then now we're going to assemble our one pot pasta. So you literally just need one pot and you're going to add your pasta to the base of the pot. So here I'm using brown rice pasta and then you're just going to add in all of your ingredients. So I'm adding all of my chopped vegetables and the awesome thing about this is once you get it cooking, it's very easy to multitask and do other kitchen things or just like sit on your couch and cuddle with your dogs. Um, oh, here I'm adding some red pepper flakes and some Italian seasoning because I actually didn't have that much pasta sauce left. I probably had about like a fourth of the jar and you would need uh, generally around half of the jar for this recipe, but I just wanted to use it up. So what I did is I actually added some water to the pasta sauce jar and shook that up and then used that for my water measurement for the pasta. So overall the tomato flavor was definitely a little less pronounced, but I decided to wing it and it was still pretty good, but I'm definitely glad I added those other seasonings to add more flavor. So then I just mixed everything together and cooked it on the stove top. If you wanna see full cooking instructions, you can check out my blog post or that other video. I will link it below. But I wanted to have something else with the pasta as well. So I took a block of tempeh and right here I am making the crispy air fried tempeh from my website. Again, I'll link it below. Basically you just chop up tempeh, put it in a bowl, add some tamari nutritional yeast, and then you toss it until it is well combined and you know, nice and golden. If you wanted to, you could add in some Italian seasoning or other things here, but I just wanted something quick and easy. So I chopped that up, mixed it, and then put it in my air fryer. And then I also wanted to air fry some broccoli on the side. I prefer air fried broccoli to, um, I guess like saute broccoli because I love how the edges get a little like crispy and brown. So I just took the broccoli florets and I actually put them in the same bowl as the tempeh and put that in the air fryer just so they get a little bit more flavor. And then here's just an update on the one pot pasta. As you can see, it's not very uh, tomato-y. So I decided to add more flavor by adding some balsamic vinegar. I actually like to do this to most of our pasta sauces anyways because it gives them more depth of flavor and acidity. It turns a little brown, but eh, you know, whatever. And then once the tempeh and the broccoli were done cooking, I added those to the pot and mixed it in. And I wanted a few more green things and I had this bag of frozen spinach that I hadn't totally used up. So I just decided to add that in too. And also this pasta is like really hot once it finished uh, its cooking. So it was good that I actually added this because it cooled down the pasta more as the spinach wilted and we were able to enjoy it a lot faster. But there you go, pasta in one pot. Sorry for all the Italians watching this video. You probably already left an angry comment below. Anyways, I decided to top our pasta with some vegan 
uh, Parmesan. It's like a cashew parm. You can make it yourself, but we like to buy the brand by uh, Kelly's Croutons, or maybe the branch is Kelly, because that's not croutons. Anyways, it's really good. And so I just mix that in, and that was it. I also had a LaCroix with dinner, but I didn't uh, film it till after, but I'm showing you now. And then now for dessert, we have a montage of some chocolate. And then we also had some almond butter with the chocolate. And then we also had some bananas to go with our almond butter and our chocolate. We like to have a wide variety of things for dessert. We just kind of like chill and hang out. And then I, I always like to end my night with these like crystallized ginger pieces. Um, they're really good. It's essentially just ginger and sugar and it just makes me feel good at the end of the night and it helps with my digestion. So that's it. That's everything I ate in a day. Super easy. Super chill, super winging it. But thanks for watching. Let me know if you'd like more videos like this and have an awesome day. Bye.